Well, I just want to thank Andy for that lovely introduction and say how delighted I am to be here with all of you at Chicago Ideas Week and having you sit here and listen to me think out loud about the future of work. So as Andy said, I am the chief talent officer for the largest agency in our city that works in the area of creativity. Um, I've had a long career, yep, 30 plus years. I started out as a trainee, eventually rose to be the CEO of our media planning and buying operation. And then as the curvy lines of every career come along, I decided that I actually wanted to go back to school. I got a master's degree in learning and organizational change at Northwestern University and decided that I was absolutely intrigued that my passion was really about understanding the dynamics of organizations, teams, and the individuals in them, and that I was going to spend my next career trying to figure out how to help people learn, change, and grow. So I am back in advertising, and I am um, delighted to be focused on the talent in our business. It is great that I'm in a creative environment, one where people are our best assets and where I have constant food for thought. So if I riff off of Andy's idea about passion and beliefs, I start with the belief that we as humans have a fundamental desire to express ourselves, to create, to connect, to um, explore, to achieve, to bring meaning to what we do. So today, I'm actually not going to talk about the future of work. Rather, I am going to talk about the future of workers. And what I'm talking about here are all of us, if we're working, employees, individuals, people, because I believe that by looking through the human lens that organizations and employers will come to some new and engaging solutions for how this thing of work occurs. So actually, even though Andy said we're not here to talk about the past, I do want to go back a little bit and talk to you about the long arc of work. So if we go back to the Romans, Greeks, and Hebrews, they thought work was pain and suffering for losers and slaves, and actually that the enlightened were the ones who got to explore, create, um, design, and then conquer. So if we get to the medieval and Protestant Reformation times, work was used to separate the lazy from the industrious, the beggars, from the self-sufficient, and to celebrate people who had a calling. If we go into our capitalistic period, it's about utility, usefulness, and maybe a little bit about worker engagement. And then by the time we get to the information age, this is the time when workers actually have more discretion about what they do. There are actually more white-collar workers in the U.S. than blue-collar workers, and work could maybe have meaning in and of itself. So today, we're transitioning into a knowledge economy. And that knowledge economy promises that perhaps we can have it all. We can have work, we can have fulfillment, we can have meaning in it, all of those other kind of things. This knowledge economy is also showing us the way of an emerging creator class. And so this class of people really focus on a new way of coloring how our work is done and what kind of work it's done. We certainly understand that economic and personal interests are converging in a way that we've never seen before. And as some of you, probably all of you now know, we're in a time when people are exerting more influence and control over their experience. If we think about entertainment, I'm talking about YouTube or Pinterest or Twitter, or our media choices, so whether we're binging or time shifting or actually creating the content ourselves, or even in my world of advertisers, where we as consumers now feel quite comfortable telling advertisers and brands how to behave. So for me, the big question is, what if we took that fundamental desire to create we added to it the components of influence and control and reimagined the workplace. What would that look like? So for me, here's the progression of thought I'd like to share with you. The future of work starts on the inside, 
on the inside of all of us. So when we come to work, we bring our identities. We bring levels of self-confidence, hope, optimism. We bring our introversion, our extroversion, our thinking styles. That's all within us, and we're bringing it. Now, the tricky thing, and I, being on the employer side, understand that those qualities that we're bringing to work, our employers can't see. So the question becomes there, what's the beneficial way for employers and employees to connect over those internal qualities? But going beyond that, and Andy mentioned this a little bit in his comments, it really is a future that includes the whole person. So we all, once again, beyond our qualities, have our hopes, dreams, our relationships, and even what happened to us in our local Starbucks line this morning. And the, the conventional wisdom is that we park all that stuff at the door when we come into work, but the reality is that we bring it all in with us. And not only are we bringing in those experiences, but importantly, we're bringing in our emotions too. We all have an emotional life and that comes with us. And so as we think about that, actually academics understand that creativity and emotion are intrinsically linked and actually can provide great benefit for employers. So as I move on in my progression, the next place I want to go, and I've already said these words, is that people are assets, but if we think about the people who come to work, they bring their own assets. So in addition to their qualities, in addition to their emotional lives and their whole person, they bring life experiences, they bring language skills, they bring travel, they bring a whole host of other things that are now assets. So when we think even about the word assets, in our culture, it means things that can be grown, things that can increase in value. So, wow, isn't that a great thought of thinking about people as coming into the workplace with things that they can trade or increase in value themselves? The next place I want to take in the progression is that we probably would be well served or it would be great to imagine a world where work is not really about labor. So let's get rid of departments, let's get rid of functions, let's get rid of the 40-hour week. What if we're all coming to work with our assets and then we just work together on projects defined by outcomes? So we all get to pick the teams of people we work on, the projects that we have, they'll have a duration, we have to have specific outcomes, all of that stuff has to be there, but the ways in which we aggregate and combine ourselves will be really different. And on top of that, in that kind of world, it means that our learning, our training has to be more real time and it probably has to be more self-directed. So I, Renetta, have to decide what I'm learning in October of 2013 that can help me grow my assets and provide greater value to my employer. And the last piece in this progression, and if you're following along, you'll probably know that I have to get here, is that if people really are assets and they bring that into the workplace with them, then we really are talking about a world of co-creation and co-ownership. So now if I've brought in my assets and I've made contributions and I've shared things and we've built things together, what does that really mean about the employer-employee relationship? So I think that's all wow. I think those are all great thoughts. To me at least, they seem logical. Don't know if they'll ever come true. But if you've been following along with me, what I've done is brought us back to a world that even the Romans couldn't imagine. Because what if work and all of its labor really could be tied to the activities of the enlightened? So learning and creativity, and I'll even leave in the conquering if we have to. The thing is, and everybody will say this, we live in a complex world, so we all know that. What I see is the possibility for a better set of dependencies. So between creativity and commercialism, between the employers and the people who come to their buildings, between outcomes and efforts, there's probably better, more profitable combinations of those kind of ideas. 
And last, I fundamentally believe that in the future of the, of the word work, there has to be the possibility for humans to truly to be able to create and then to benefit from what they have created. So with that, I will end by saying it is truly possible. Thank you for your time and attention today and enjoy the rest of the speakers.